one take wide and same old backdrop and I'm starting to really sort of see in these videos that maybe I, I ought to change that up I think I should deposit that in the comments below otherwise um, you know I'll just keep doing it in my dismal room here with the with the sort of unexciting background but who cares right well what do we got another twofer it's Friday um, so I want to talk about two wines one of them I've talked about very recently and the other one I've talked about very recently in a different vintage so the first we can talk about is this it's a white wine naturally I'm gonna start with the white and it is the Clos Saint Landry 2005 um, the reason I want to go over this again is because this is a completely different bottle than last note if you can see the color here look how pale that is look how young that is the last one was very very advanced it was quite a dark yellow butterscotchy very it had sort of made its move and moved on it was still fantastic it was nice but it, it really this really brings to mind you know there's no great uh, wines there's only great bottles um, and that's got to do with storage and etc etc so I assume the original 2005 I bought was probably kept in not great conditions this on the other hand um, you can see the stains on the label and stuff and those are just moisture stains actually um, so it's I, I don't have a problem with that because I'm gonna drink them I'm not you know trying to sell them for lots of money or anything like that um, cork was perfect the wine had ridden up the cork uh, top level hadn't and I think for 2005 that's okay it shouldn't be I don't think it should have gone down by now so but I'm super impressed with the wine's color because that means like it, it's had limited oxygen contact and then you know when I get this I get this nose and it's just a little bit sweet um, uh, uh, um, vanilla vanilla pear pineapple kind of mixture on the fruit and uh, and this that, that super crazy Saint Landry minerality which is very unique to this wine it is a blend it is kind of crossing sort of Merceau and Chablis mm. very pineapple a little bit fat but not super fat this has still you know this bottle could actually go some more years I think it could even get better with some more years it's got this beautiful um, sweet fruit and then and then a tannic mid palette I would say it's more tannin the fruit drops off um, and then the mineral picks up towards the finish but there's a hint of that pineapple fruit sort of wafting along from the back so you're getting this mineral up front and you're getting this like backdraft a fruit which is weird I mean often the wines that kind of do the other way around right the mineral is kind of wafting out from the back the fruits on the front it's kind of clipped um, I'm generalizing but you know my experience with wine I always think Saint Landry is very very it's a funny um, I, I can't really compare it to anything you know what I mean I've got a, I think it I really do believe pear pineapple mixture maybe well there might be something else there very Moorish very um, salty and I love the tannin in this I love the dryness uh, that comes through the mid palate and sort of lingers for the finish and then the finish kind of comes back over up and over that so it has this beautiful structure uh, which is quite unique to this wine 
and for that I, I don't think it's grave but I think it's it's definitely um, uh, top premier cri you know like when we talk about the close Saint uh, yeah Saint Jean and uh, uh, Amoureuse and you know the, the top premier crus where, where we start like looking at them hmm, in some vintages could they be grand cru I can tell you I've had worse grand crus than this how's that I'll just put it that way especially in these years and 05 is not the greatest year for uh, white Saint Landry. Mm. Has a nice popcorn edge to it as well. Mm. That's what this is what we like in white wine, huh? So Yeah. Can't go wrong. Bouchard, Bon Clos Saint Henri, and look at that label. I mean again I, I just want to show it. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. I bought them in a, I bought this in a three a set of three, so and this is the first. So hopefully the other two are just as splendid and maybe I'll save them for a special dinner. On to the next one. We're in Burgundy still. That's not a Grand Cru. Let's keep our panties on. I don't know if you can see the color but it's starting to break a little. It's starting to get a little orangey or uh, you know. It's a Fabli, it's a Gevry Chamartin, it's 2001. Okay, there's a couple things I want to say about this. The first one is that Gevry Chamartin Vieille Vigne is how they call it these days. I can't find any reference to Vieille Vigne from these years. Uh, maybe that's so. If you know anything about it, please comment. And I wonder if who they get the grapes from or the plot I don't know if it's their plot or not, but or the plots. Um, <clears throat> if they just feel that it's Vieving now after twenty some years, or um, if who they buy the must from or the grapes from, um, they can honestly say that it that it's Vieving now and it wasn't then. What I will say is this: it doesn't have the depth of today's wines it doesn't but it but in one way it does there's a succulence to this and and a um a sort of tanning uh smoothness to it that that kind of contributes and adds to the mineral length that's quite sweet no it isn't even if i wouldn't even say sweet i would say it's very balanced but because there's this acidity sweetness sort of thing that, it, that is just kind of deciding okay let's work together on this the tannin is a little bit pushier from the back and I but I think that's an effect of the vintage I, I know one in Burgundy pretty good um, and I know that um, tannin is a, is a feature of those wines it's a different structure than 2000, for instance, which was softer and rounder. This has got this heavenly, heavenly malt. Um, malt and cinnamon. And I've had it open for a couple of hours now. The fruit's getting a little muted, but but muted in a way that I don't think it's gone. I think it's coming back again. It's surprisingly long for just a village. Um, I will say that there, there is a fair amount of tannin that it, that is contributing to that length, but there, it's a well meaty. Um, um, musky mid palate with a refreshing, you know, like when I breathe in now after a couple of sips, there's a lovely, cool breeze, which is always a fantastic sign, right? I mean, now we're talking 
proper breathing. It's not, you're not gonna, you know, it's not gonna occur. It's not supposed to be, it's a massage. Mm. Maybe even a bit of tea. Very slightly though, more orange pico than, um, a little, a little, a little, um, there's a sharpness to it. There's an acidity to it. That's a good thing. Because it does tame the tannin a little. I can taste that the tannin would easily, happily take over. And it probably will in 5, 10. I wouldn't hold these if I had any more of them. I would drink them. I've got one more. I bought it in a set of two. And I bought some O2s. And those, that'll be in the next, um, I'll taste them next time and we'll talk about that. But there's this musky sense of proper, properly aged Burgundy village from a proper producer. And I keep buying these Faiblis. I'm going to say it again because I bought the 59 La Tricière Chamartin, expecting nothing, paying nothing at the time from auction. And those bottles were monsters. They were absolutely convincing about um, about the uh, longevity and what what great burgundies can be with age. And it was Faibli, who I always thought was just some you know negociant type, but I have way more respect for it now. You should too. Stay thirsty. We'll see you next time.